Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll take up a problem from fluid mechanics. So this question is mainly on the idea of buoyancy, okay? So we have a cylindrical vessel, okay, that is vertical and it is filled with water to the brim and uh, the cover is closed, okay? So the container is fully filled with water and it's closed everywhere. There lies two balls connected to the strings as shown in the figure. So these are attached to the ends of the container and they're attached with a string. Ball A is made up of steel and ball B is made up of cork, okay? And that we can kind of see uh, the density of the cork is less than the density of of water that's why it is trying to move up okay and uh, the opposite is true for the steel which is why it's hanging from the thread so now the cylinder is being rotated about the vertical axis as shown in the figure so basically we have to talk about will the balls deflect after it starts rotating and if so in which directions do they deflect okay so do they deflect in the same direction or do they deflect in different directions so that's what we have to judge in this question okay so give this a good try guys then check out the solution okay okay so before we begin guys uh, we are going to take the example of a simpler situation uh, in which we have a container filled with water and it is being accelerated horizontally with an acceleration of a so you guys may be knowing that the free surface of the fluid actually takes the shape of a slanted plane right so, okay so now the thing i want to discuss is if we have a fluid ball here okay so basically uh, inside this fluid i'm just taking a small ball of the fluid now i want to write down the forces that are acting on this fluid particle and uh, and now what i want to do is i want to isolate this fluid isolate this ball and i want to try to write the forces acting on it so let's say its volume is v and let's say the density of the fluid is rho so it will clearly have its weight acting downwards right which is v rho g mass into g right and now as the fluid is at rest with respect to the conduct container this ball will have the same acceleration as the container right so it is being accelerated towards the right with an acceleration of a which means there must be another force in the horizontal direction which is providing this acceleration so now the thing is there is no other force other than the force applied by the fluid okay so this is the force applied by the surrounding fluid on this fluid ball in the x direction and the magnitude of that turns out to be mass into acceleration right so that is going to be rho v a so any fluid so any fluid ball that you take or any fluid element that you take is being acted upon by a horizontal force of rho v a okay and in the vertical direction obviously to maintain equilibrium in the, there is equilibrium it's not being accelerated in the vertical direction and we have a force in the y direction uh, in order to balance out this v rho g which is basically equal to v rho g and this is what we formally learn as the Bowen force right in the non-accelerated case so collectively the fluid applies a v rho g in the upward direction and a rho v a in the x direction okay okay so now we can also do this in the uh, containers frame of reference so so okay so now discussing the important point so the point is instead of the fluid ball which we initially took if we take another ball of the same volume but different density so i have taken a pink ball here this uh, this ball has the same volume as my fluid but it's obviously a, has a different density so let's say its density is rho prime now even this ball will experience the same force by the fluid so the same force v rho g and here rho is the density of the liquid right and fx was rho v a where rho was the density of the fluid so even this pink ball will experience the same force by the fluid so if i want to mark it so fx will be rho v a rho is the density of the fluid and it will also experience a rho v g the reason why these forces develop is because the fluid molecules surrounding this ball is constantly colliding with the ball right so all the molecules surrounding the object is constantly colliding with the ball so it's uh, it's because of the result of these collisions Bowen forces actually develop right so it doesn't matter if you take an object of a different density or not the surrounding fluid molecules still collide at the same rate right provided the volume is same okay and that's the reason why even though we are taking a different a different ball a different element the Bowen forces are still going to be the same so that was basically the idea that we need for this problem. So now we can go back to our current problem. So let's draw a diagram for that. So uh, remember guys, this ball has a density of rho s. The ball above is the steel ball. So I'm just going to call its density as rho s. And the ball below has a density of rho c, which is the density of the cork. Okay. And let's say the density of the fluid is rho. Okay. So now we are rotating the container basically. Okay. So now the thing is guys, once we start uh, rotating uh, the cylinder with some angular velocity we know the pressure uh, will vary with the radius right in fact uh, the further you go away from the axis the more the pressure actually increases right so the pressure has a dependency with r squared right so the further you go away from the axis the larger the pressure 
Now, in the question, guys, they want us to figure out in which direction does the balls actually deviate. Okay, so the x coordinate of both the balls are actually the same, right? Okay, so now we are also assuming here uh, that the balls are small, relatively small, meaning, meaning if r is the radii of the ball, it is kind of less compared to the radius of the larger cylinder. Okay, right? So we are here assuming that the ball is tiny enough so that we can approximately say that this ball is at a constant distance of x. So once that assumption is set clear, now what we can do is uh, observe the forces. So so now uh, this problem, we can just solve it with respect to the frame of the container. So I am taking a reference frame that is rotating with the same angular velocity as the container. So with respect to this frame, the container appears to be at rest. But this is a non-inertial frame of reference, right? Because we, are, because we are choosing a rotating frame, right? So we'll have to apply the pseudo forces. But here, we, the only pseudo force that we'll have, we'll have to consider is the centrifugal force. And the centrifugal force is nothing but m omega square r in the radially outward direction. So here I am assuming, it, assuming that the balls are at a distance of x from the axis of rotation. Centrifugal force on the steel ball turns out to be uh, rho of steel into v multiplied by omega square x. And on the cork, it will be rho c v omega square x. Okay, so this is the pseudo force that is acting on the ball. Now the thing is, I'm going to work with an assumption, guys. So I'm going to assume that the balls are not going to deflect. Basically, the string will be vertical. Okay, so we'll prove that that is a wrong assumption. And so in the previous page, we figured everything in the ground frame. But we could have easily done it with respect to the container's frame of reference as well. So if so, with respect to the container, what we'll do is we'll apply a pseudo force of ma on the ball, right? we'll apply a pseudo force of ma on the ball so if i if i work uh, with respect to the frame of the container instead of saying that this ball accelerates with an acceleration of a in the rightward direction we'll just apply a pseudo force of ma in the opposite direction and we'll just say that fx should be enough to balance ma for the equilibrium of this fluid ball okay it's the same idea so here also we can do the same thing here assume for a second that uh, this was not a steel ball and a fluid ball so it will, the fluid ball will feel as outward centrifugal force of rho L V omega square X, right? And in order to balance this, the surrounding fluid will ap apply a force F X, which will balance this out, right? And this F X is a real force, by the way. This F X is the force that the surrounding fluid applies on the steel ball. And the magnitude of this is going to be rho of liquid, just like what we discussed in the last page. It will be rho of liquid into the volume of the sphere multiplied by omega square x. Okay, now, and in the vertical direction also, we have a Bowen force. This is simply a V rho liquid into G, right? And then we have the weight of the ball. So I'm not considering the vertical FBD because it doesn't really matter, right? We are just, in, we're just observing the tangential forces. So on this cork ball also, we'll have a Bowen force of, uh, in the x direction, we'll have a Bowen force of rho liquid V omega square x. So if you observe the Bowen force is identical for both of these balls, okay? Okay, so now what decides if the balls will deflect towards the left or the right? The answer is, is the net force, right? The density of the steel is larger, which means the force on the right is actually greater than the force on the left. So our original assumption, so this assumption is actually wrong the steel ball will actually deflect towards the right. And similarly, rho L is greater than rho C, which means the cork ball will deflect towards the left. So in the container's frame of reference, okay, so basically the steel ball, because the centrifugal force is larger, it is going to deflect towards the right. And the cork ball, because the Bowen force is larger, is going to deflect towards the left. So that's the simple idea on which this question was based. So you can answer it pretty easily if you knew the directions how Bowen forces are acting. Okay. So guys, once again, this uh, rho L V omega square X, right, or basically the Bowen force, it's a real force that the surrounding fluid molecules applies on the ball. Okay. And these two radially outward forces that we drew is a centrifugal force, which is obviously a pseudo force that arised because we are writing everything with respect to the rotating frame of reference. So yeah, so yeah, that was basically it for this question. The answer, I guess, will be C option. Ball A will be deflected away while ball B will be deflected towards the axis of rotation. Okay, so that's uh, it for this video, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. Do like, share and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And that's it. Thanks for watching.